Hey guys, two intros later, I have finally, hopefully, nailed it. This is, uh, this is the tutorial. This is the last episode of this series, and we'll be finishing it up today. Uh, let's see. We will be tackling Zot today, and, uh, before we start, I just want to say how freaking hot it is out here in Australia. Uh, so, it should be about springtime for us. Uh, in the last couple of days, we've averaged about 35 degrees Celsius, and everyone is on fire, basically. Uh, yeah, that's really. I don't normally. Want, I don't want to talk about things that are, you know, maybe not going to be relevant in a couple of days, but it's just really hot right now. So, you know, bear with it. For me, I guess. I don't know. All right. So let's think about what's happening in Zot Five. Oh, sorry, in Zot in general, I guess. So in Zot. Treat every enemy as if they are lethal. It is a very easy rule of thumb, and once you figure that out, you will be A-OK. -okay. You need to play slowly, you need to play clearly. So the first, let's look at immediately what happens in the first scene, I guess, of uh, playing. So right next to us is a death cult. These guys now can drain your hunger really quickly. Draconians come with breath weapons, and they have weapons. Tentacled monstrosities can constrict you and hold you in place while other things hit you. And this Moth of Wrath can berserk the Draconians and other dragons in Zot. So, let's talk, uh, let's, let's fight this Death Cult first. See how it hit me and I went to very hungry already. Uh, yeah, the best way to deal with that is just kill them really quick. Actually, the best way to deal with most enemies in Zot is just kill them really quick. So as you can see, I'm being constricted here. I'm gonna slowly fight it out and yeah, we're going to make it. So I'm going to be pretty safe. I'm going to be playing as safely as I can um, in, in Zot. And the reason why is because, of course, it's the last stage of the game for a Thurin game. Uh, you expect it to be the most difficult, so obviously it will be. Um, I will. I have had a lot more Zot deaths than I am uh, proud to admit, I'd say. Alright, so... What happened is this guy with this squiggly uh, rune in his hand, he's a teleporter, and what he did was he just blinked everything around me. Uh, I don't really have a choice but to fight until I can clear a hole out, uh, an area out, that I can run away with. I'm just going to keep running backwards. There is nearly no point, I guess, in trying to fight too many enemies at once. Uh, I'm already being pretty badly messed up. Uh, the guy with the blue flame in his hand, I think that's a Annihilator. Look, if you just treat all all Draconians equally as dangerous, then you know you don't have to know what each one does. I, I don't know too well what each one does. Uh, I'm going to back off here. I'm going to stair pull. Hopefully going to get one. There we go. Uh, going to get one back. Huh. Alright, whatever. I'm trying to basically split up packs. I never want to engage a full pack at once. Uh, I want to note, I guess, that I switch from my chopping to my anti-magic axe. That's just a <clears throat> you. That's just, I guess, choice. Uh, I prefer the anti-magic axe uh, for Zot, mostly because the dangerous spellcasters are very numerous here. Uh, if I had gone to Elven Halls, which I didn't this game, I think uh, I probably would use that there as well. Personally, though, I don't think Elven Halls is a good place to go. Uh, apparently, I didn't pick up a cloak. Yeah, I didn't have a cloak on this whole time. That's pretty surprising. Uh, let's get that on, I guess. And I can drop this uh, flaming battle axe. The hydras are no longer an issue for me. Uh, I'm going to use dig again. And then I'm going to use disintegration to create a kill hole. Now, in Zot 5, uh, in Zot, mostly in Zot 5, kill holes are incredibly dangerous. Uh, they are not to be used. I guess without knowing how much of that, how much your character can take, because in a lot of these situations, you'll be fighting strong enemy after strong enemy after strong enemy, and a kill hole just makes it hard for you to run away, or like I guess do anything but fight. You you have a chance to teleport, but in Zot Five you don't want to teleport. I'll I'll talk about that more later. Um, yeah, so I consider I consider Zot One to Four about as difficult combined as Zot 5, so uh, I'm just going to talk about early Zot first. You know, there's not too many dangerous enemies, they're, they're fairly dangerous, but uh, unless you run into an orb of fire or something scary, you know, it's not too bad. 
your character should be able to handle this. This is uh, harder than deaths. Alright, so the way to deal with death clubs is usually eat fruit to uh, counteract their hunger draining, because fruit takes one turn to heal, uh, one turn to eat. Whoops, I walked into that orbital file. Alright, this is a good time to start, I guess. Let's completely take our hands off the keyboard. Let's talk about an orbital fire. So an orbital fire, actually, let's get into here first. An orbital fire is an extremely dangerous, very fast firing ball of death, basically. It has two attacks, Bolt of Fire and Fireball, which do a ton of fire damage. And it's, but one of the main things that make it so dangerous is also its combination of the ability to malmutate you, so give you bad mutations, and its incredible tankiness. It is very durable. It has one of the highest health in the game, uh, for the three room game. I think it does have the highest health. It is really strong. I, I can't stress that enough. You will never want to fight an Orb of Fire without at least one or two bops. So what I'm going to do right now is I am going to use Berserk uh, in this scenario. And the reason why is because Berserking, when there is so much space behind me that I've cleared, is almost safe. Like, I am not going to get anything dangerous. So I have tabbed through this, this Orb of Fire, but you have to understand that the danger is not in just fighting it. It's in dealing with, like, the mutations it deals, having the resistance to fire, and then also fighting everything around it. So, you know, Orbs of Fire should only be taken out in 1v1 situations like that one. You should use at least one buff. Berserk, uh, Haste, Might, they're all excellent against Orbs of Fire. And the reason why, and also ma Anti-Magic. Anti-Magic drains its ability to use its spells, which makes it do a lot less damage. Uh, so yeah, all of these combined are really great to dealing with Orbs of Fire. They're pretty much, they're the Hydras of a 3 room game. They, they are the one thing that you have to consider all the time, every time. Because you will always fight some. You, I don't think I've ever went to Zot and not fought an Orb of Fire. Or at least not seen one. Maybe I, maybe there was one where I like ran away from everything, but I doubt it. Because I'm not that kind of player. I don't really run too much from stuff. Uh, only if it's too dangerous like Mara. I don't like Mara. Uh, electric golems, I want to note, are uh, incredibly dangerous as well because of their high spike damage. So, by spike damage, I mean they have the potential to just do like 85 damage to you out of the blue. Um, especially if they get you against a wall and they can hit you with a double zapping attack, which is very niche, but you know, you have to learn how to avoid it eventually. Uh, again, I'm dissecting this, this pack, there's not too much to talk about that. Uh, yeah, so. In regards to the orbs of fire, you really it's I can't stress how important it is to just treat them as if they are the they are going to kill you in one hit. You never want to be facing two orbs of fire, like and or an ancient lich at the same time. You want to be hasted, you want to be mited, whatever possible buff you have available. It's important to have it. Alright, I'm gonna use digging to make myself a tunnel, and I'm going to use disintegration to make myself a kill hole. I'm going to disintegrate again, and that's going to give me a bit of room to retreat. So I'm taking a heavy amount of poison damage. Uh, I dropped all my sources of resist poison, so that kind of sucks, but I do have like 24 curing potions. Uh, at this stage in the game, I don't think there's any reason to start saving consumables. This is why you save cons consumables. This is the one place where you use them. So if even if you're a big hoarder, there's absolutely zero reason for you to... Uh, even bother trying to save consumables. I would just chug heal wounds if I felt like it here. And the reason why is because if you die, whether you die or you win, you're not seeing this character again. None of the items in his in his inventory will be yours. Like after um after this game is over, you won't ever see these like 22, 23 potions of curing again. They're gone. Whether you died or lived. So it doesn't matter. Whether you finish with zero or you finish with all of them. So yeah, that's my I guess, uh, warning? Not not quite a warning. More, more like a, I guess, statement. I don't, I don't know. What, what I'm trying to say is, you know, <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. Just use your consumables. You should be using them the whole game, but if you are a hoarder, like some people are, you know, this is the time to use it. It doesn't matter how much of a hoarder you are. Okay, so the Moth of Wrath is Berserk the Dragon. Thankfully, it didn't do too much damage this time, but dragons... Berserk enemies are very powerful, so if you see a Berserk enemy, consider teleporting. Uh, I didn't have to that time, but you know, you never know. 
it, different characters uh, have different responses. This one is very strong, so Berserk enemies don't really do too much to him. But if you are weaker, uh, Berserking enemies are just dangerous. Just flat out dangerous. Curstos, another um, dangerous enemy. So what Curstos can do is they can torment you, which means it cuts half your health down. They can summon mushrooms, which can confuse you. And they're just general nuisances. Uh, I'm going to use regen, and then I'm going to strike at it. And my again, my anti-magic is draining its ability to do anything. So, you know, while this looks easy, it's actually not easy. If I had not had the anti-magic weapon, I would be in pretty bad shape because that thing could have tormented me, maybe, tormented me maybe two or three times. So I'm slowing over my words. I, I noticed that in the last video. Uh, not really sure why I'm doing it. Um, maybe I'm just trying to get too much across. I'll try to be a bit more clear with the way I talk. I noticed that again. I'm being a bit, a bit self-conscious again, which is good. Um, there's a whole bunch of vampiric axes. I really want to talk about that, but at the end of the day, I don't want to distract people from the fact that I'm, I don't need it. Uh, it shouldn't be a thing that you need. But vampiric axes are pretty cool. Uh, just, I'm just noting that I had three of them this game. Uh, again, berserk dragon uh, didn't do too much, but to be honest, a normal dragon wouldn't have done any damage to me at all. So the fact that it Berserk and did damage is kind of a testament to how strong Berserk is. Okay, so that downstairs, there's a tentacle monstrosity here, and a whole bunch of melee enemies. I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to be constricted downstairs, so I'm actually going to go, going to, go to a different set of stairs. There we go. Uh, I'm just sitting here waiting, hoping that an enemy will come across. Yes, he does. Oh, I don't have music on. That's nah, fine. Uh, I don't think it matters this, this game. This game is a little bit serious. Mostly because, uh, you know, it's Zot. Uh, everyone everyone loves watching people die in Zot. Uh, it's, it's a lot of... <laughs> it sucks to die in Zot. It really does. Uh, you never you never want to have a character die in Zot. It's the worst feeling. Uh, mostly because, you know, you spend that many hours playing and then suddenly, bam, you're dead. And you just wasted all that time. You got almost, you were like three steps away from the end, and then you just dead. Uh, so yeah. If you have to, even if you play quickly normally, when it gets to Zot, just play slow. It's not, it's not really like, it doesn't hurt you by playing slow. Uh, it actually just improves your chances of winning by like 10, 20%, which is awesome. You want that percentage. You want as high a percentage as you can of surviving Zot, I guess. Tentacled Monstrosity, I'm, there's a lot of enemies on the uh, screen already, about four. I'm kind of gonna, I'm gonna regen, just in case. Okay, I took damage, so that means my regen is useful. Uh, I'm on fire right now, that's okay. I have triple RF, which means that I'm not gonna be taking too much damage from that. Uh, lightning is a little bit scary for me because I don't have the resistance to it, I believe. Uh, I'm making sure to stand outside the poison clouds, not, not too much of a... Uh, amazing tactical decision here, just kind of trying to hold on. Okay, so I am about to die. Uh, let's th think about what we need. So I'm actually going to stand, I'm going to walk into this teleport trap. It didn't take me anywhere, which kind of sucks. I'm going to use invis. Do I have invis? No, I don't. That's fine. Uh, I'll use fear. Okay, two of them walked off. I'm going to uh, I'm going to use a heal wounds so I get to good amounts of health. I'm going to summon a brother in arms, and then I'm going to fight. I'm just going to back off. Uh, make sure that my curing is up. Ooh, I'm in a bit of a dangerous situation here. I'm going to keep heal wounding. Just going to keep heal wounding. I'm going to spam heal wounds basically. I'm going to dig diagonally so I can get out of the poison clouds. I'm going to keep healing. So in that fight alone, I took like what? I used 8 potions, maybe 8 charges of heal wounds. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter though. Uh, I, I wanted to use it. I want to be using these consumables. The more consumables I'm using, it means that I'm trying harder. Though I suppose it was my fault for, for getting in that situation in the first place. I overestimated my damage because I'd fought this many draconians before. And apparently I can't fight them anymore. So again, I'm going to back off. Uh, if you're about to die in Zot 5, or in Zot in general, I strongly, strongly suggest you just stop playing for a very, for like quite a while, like maybe an hour at least, I'd say. 
if you have the time, of course. Uh, dying in Zot is not fun. I can't stress that enough. I'm going to recharge my digging wand. I just want digging. It's pretty good. Okay, so with this kill hole, enemies are getting a lot better. But again, if an enemy, if a strong enemy comes along, I could be screwed over. Uh, we don't know yet. Cloak and visibility, fine. That's I don't really care. Uh, I don't have the evocations to make use of invisibility, even though e invis is pretty good. Uh, I stepped on a zot trap. That's fine. Uh, I'm gonna just keep backing off until I get to a safer space. Gonna pull back. There we go. I'm minimizing the danger, essentially, of uh, minimizing the danger of you know each flight by making sure that I'm not taking on three enemies at a time. They're not berserked on me. I'm just make. I'm just like paying extra attention, I suppose, to the to the statuses of my enemies. I make sure that they don't do something that I'm not aware of. All right, so I actually managed to max out my fighting and dodging when I wasn't paying attention. So I'm gonna just put train axes on. Like, notice how I've trained only four skills this whole game. Uh, very easy. Okay, so this vault is a specific one, and I'm actually gonna use this. I would use what's called a like not not called, but I consider it to be a kind of zot special. Not not zot special, but I I consider to use it mostly in zot. Uh, it's where I use two digging charges rather than a, dis a digging and a disintegration. And the reason why I use it is so that I can back off more uh, if things go bad. Like now. Uh, let's make some extra holes. So what, what it does here, what, what I can do here is I can stand here. Uh, I can stand right here. If the enemies attack me, I can back off to here. So I have two essential kill holes. Uh, it's, it's, it's more useful than you think it is. So yeah, uh, there are a lot of enemies here, uh, about vaults level, so I'm just kind of, I think it's called the Giant's Vault, I'm not sure what it's called, but yeah, there's just, there's maybe like 20, 20 30, 40 Giants, I don't remember, there's a lot, uh, and they're very, they're fairly high damage, so I'm just being a bit patient, I'm just casually drawing, casually, carefully drawing them down, uh, making sure to back off to my safe spot every single time. I'm taking very little damage, and that's probably because this character is, again, really good at blocking physical attacks, and that's about it. Like, he, he just does that. That's his thing. Uh, so I'm just going to keep pulling. I know that the enemies here, technically, I could go in and fight, but, again, don't want to risk it. Don't want to risk it. I'm just going to... Oops. I messed up. I'm actually going to move past these guys to get back to my kill hole. Uh, the second that dragon breathes poison, it didn't. I was going to say, if it breathes poison, I'll start backing off to a different corner. That way I won't get poisoned too much, uh, and I won't have to be lethally poisoned while fighting. Yeah, so you can see here there's a lot of enemies that I've killed, just based on the items that dropped. Uh, yep. Alright, so this, this chamber's been pretty much deflated now. I'm just gonna wait for the rest of them to come out. I, I, again, I don't want to engage too many enemies at once. I'm just gonna keep pulling back. Even though there's like probably like, what, seven now left? I'm gonna just keep doing it until there's almost two. I don't think there's a reason to go too crazy with the engages. Yeah, so Vault uh, Zot sometimes has this weird thing where all three staircases are guarded by a huge number of enemies. Sometimes it's orbs of fire. Fire? Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know what can you do about it? Just yeah, this kind of sucks. So like in this scenario where everything, literally everything, is Oh man. Okay. So what can I do here? There is not a lot. I'm gonna back up. I'm starving. Uh, I'm gonna use fruit. And I'm gonna fight. Okay. So what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna take a lot of damage, but I'm gonna think of a way to handle this whole fight without having to die. So I'm gonna use haste, agility, regen. I'm gonna just Start tabbing, see what happens. I'm starving, so I'm going to eat a piece of fruit. Keep tabbing. Okay, I'm going to pull up. Again, eating fruits to keep my uh, food up. Everything is berserk around me, but berserk enemies don't do a lot to a heavily armored guy, to be honest. They, they are not too dangerous. Okay, so I've managed to fight about half of that mob. So I'm going to keep going, keep pulling up. Uh, was that an orb of fire down there? 
No, there wasn't. Okay, good. So the only issue here now is the cursed toad. Um, and again, berserking giant, uh, draconians. I'm gonna try to keep pulling up. I'm gonna keep trying to make this less lethal for myself. Yeah, so I just took like about 150 to 200 damage in one turn. This is the danger. This is why I'm resting before every dive. I don't want to go down and accidentally just kill myself. Uh, the torment is hitting me for full 50% of my health, and I can't resist. I don't have any resist negative, so yeah, I'm taking full damage from that. Uh, let's summon a phantom mirror, I guess. I don't know. I'm just chucking it out there. I'm gonna go upstairs. Okay, and I'm gonna be able to. Ooh. Okay. The thing is, this guy can't actually kill me because he doesn't have a strong attack to finish me off. Uh, it's more of a support enemy because you know it it can it can torment you down to a quarter health but it can't actually kill you uh rarely do you Ooh, okay okay so that's an orb of fire again um it's not really anything i can do i'm gonna see if i can pull it up for a berserk if it goes up with me yeah okay that's fine so once it's in a 1v1 situation, this character is strong enough to fight it. It's just a little bit scary, of course. Uh, if my berserk ended while while I was fighting that orb, I would have teleported, even if the even if the orb was in like two health. And the reason why is orbs are strong enough to kill you uh, from full health, even even with RF plus plus plus. Don't don't ever underestimate them. Don't think they're a breeze. Um, you have to be fairly. I guess cocky to think that you can kill like three orbs of fire in a single fight. Obviously you can. I'm not saying you can't, it's impossible, but you know, I don't like risking it. <sighs> 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 yeah. 